You shall not pass! <laughs> I hope you have that on video. Please tell me you do. Crazy okay, God. for all you YouTube uh, watchers, uh, God, please tune in. All right, hey, welcome to episode number two of the 508 Podcast. My name is Michael. I'm going to be your host just about every week. I hope it's never Justin Davis. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, but welcome to the podcast. We are so excited uh, about today's conversation. Again, we have Pastor Devin the Fry. What up, what up, what up? Thank you guys for tuning in and listening. And also, Justin, the doctor who's not actually a doctor yet, Davis. Yeah, so anybody trying to show up to the 508 looking for surgical help, I cannot help right. you. Spiritual surgery, we can't help Yes, with. open heart surgery with your uh, spirit, yes, I can help with that. <laughs> yes, and if you're consuming this content on uh, YouTube, uh, we went with the hipster vibe. Besides Dev, because he's kind of an old man now, he, I think he's like 39 or something That's like that. Facts. I feel like that. Yeah. But he's got gray YouTube hair, uh, Mike has yeah. YouTube, Mike has no hair. Right, but you can't see it, so praise God. Anyways, hey, if it's your first time uh, on the podcast, we want to thank you so much for coming out, hanging out with us. Uh, we don't take your time for welcome, granted. Welcome. Uh, what we want you to know, too, is that you don't have to believe what we believe in order to belong. And so, you know, we're going to be talking about... Can you about, say that one more time, Mike? You know, we don't have to always believe what we believe... In order to belong. Okay, thanks. Okay, Good. praise God. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, Gandalf, yeah, no, listen. Um, and so, you know, if it's your, you know, first time, thank you for coming. And then the per, the pop the uh, yeah. Was that tongues? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Um, I had a heart attack on mine. Yeah, hey, I had. <laughs> let's restart the entire. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So uh, bring it back. The uh, the purpose the purpose of this podcast is to to help you navigate. <laughs> 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 I looked at Lauren, I said, cut it. You need to cut everything. <laughs> but I hope all this gets in the post-production. Yeah. Um, so if you, if this is your first time, the purpose is to help navigate your 20s. That's what we're going to be talking about. So today's conversation is on routines, rhythms, and rest. Routines, rhythm, and rest. And so, you know, I thought that it'd be fun to start the conversation. Um, and I'm coming for bodies on this one, especially after this last few minutes. <laughs> and if I don't like your answer, here's my thing, Kev, okay? Uh, if I don't like your answer, I'm going to ask you again, okay? okay. And I want to know what is the weirdest routine from both of you. And if I don't like it, I'm coming for your body. I mean, okay. I, can t I can take this. I can take this first. So, okay, thanks, Hipster. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, this is a routine I actually established about a, a month, month and a half ago. Uh, I wake up at 4:30 in the morning uh, now, and I make sure to text Mike first thing, oh. uh, just to make sure right. that he's having a, a good, a good day. Right. Starts it off on the right foot. No, I love that. I love. Uh, yeah, and then I just head straight uh, okay. to the gym and just. Get really swole. Yeah, he only goes to the gym on Mondays and Thursdays. So <laughs> yeah, and I just look at myself in the mirror. And Dev is three times a month currently with the gym. Currently with uh, all the responsibility and uh, flipping the kid. Right, yeah. and I think you're trying to kind of deviate from the question that I asked originally, and so honestly, I was trying to think about it because you sprung this question on me. I don't know of a weird routine. That okay, I have. okay. Do, do you I mean want, pet peeves? Just... Maybe is that what you're asking? Right. I have, a, I have weird pet peeves. No, I mean, I'm you, do, tell you, guys. you do have a, a child, so there's got to be some routines that come oh, out of that. I got tons of great routines. I don't know about weird routines. I'll tell you a routine because Pastor Devin clearly isn't even part of this conversation today. Um, I personally, you know, I do two different things with my bald head. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, I am 26, single and bald. I'm just going to plug that in there as an advertisement. I don't think that those are correlated whatsoever. Uh, Okay. Well, anyways, let the me go back. The purpose of this podcast is not to promote your singleness. <laughs> oh, I didn't. It's to actually help young professionals oh. navigate their 20s, not you navigate your singleness. Oh, 
Okay, it was just a short ad. That's what I was going for. But anyways, back to my routine. Thank you, Pastor Devin. Um, so what I'll do is, you know, once or twice a week, depending on, you know, how frizzy I want my head to Restart be. Restart the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home, guys. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Anyways, can I finish my routine? Thank you. Um, so what I'll do is, you know, once or twice a week, I don't only do with the grain kind of shape. Devin, enough. Okay, if you can't, if you're not seeing this podcast on YouTube, you need to because he is losing it. Um, but I will not only shave with the grain, I'll shave against the grain. You know what I mean? So when you, when you look at the shiny bald head, there's something there. You know what I mean? And there's just this, there's this glow. Yeah, irritated skin. Uh, there was, I was talking about the glow, the glow aspect. Anyways, um, clearly this is not going the way I wanted to. And Deb doesn't want to contribute uh, to our conversation. So on a more serious note, we're talking today about routines, rhythm, and rest. And Devin, you know, put together, he always has a list for everything. I love that about right. my pastor. And so, Devin, what is the purpose and value of having, you know, a routine that you don't, you know, have in a weird way? But Well, I think, um, you know, routine and discipline to me are synonymous. Uh, as scripture says, in Hebrews 12, uh, I believe it's 11. No discipline is pleasant at the time. Later, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness for those who are trained by it. And so one thing I love about that text is it just talks about no discipline is pleasant. And so a lot of times it's just kind of going against the grain of what you want or what your will is kind of telling you and saying. But uh, I heard it like this. Discipline today is uh, basically saying your future is saying thank you for the disciplines that you have today. And here's another big thought if you want to remember something. And I hope it's sticky enough for you that you can remember it. Uh, today's rhythms are tomorrow's realities. Today's mm -hmm. rhythms... Mm -hmm. Our tomorrow's realities. I think it's so important to have some rhythms and routines. Um, I think a lot of things that you're facing in your life are not spiritual issues. Let me say it again. A lot of things in your life, the problems that you're facing, I don't think are spiritual issues. I think they're practical issues. Yeah. And so we blame the devil way too much mm -hmm. for the things and the issues that are going on in our life. He does not have as much authority as you think he has. Um, a lot of the times it's lack of wisdom or it's lack of routine or it's lack of decision making or lack of wisdom that we have on our part. And so that's why I think rhythms and routines are so valuable and so important. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it just, I mean, it just makes sure, it makes you, makes you make sure. Sorry, I'm having a mic moment. Uh, <laughs> stop the podcast, please. Uh, it, it helps you make sure that you can get everything done throughout the day, too. Um, so, like, I'm a very busy person. And I say busy. I don't like to say busy. Um, but, you know, being busy is fulfilling um, if you are busy with the work and the things that you enjoy doing so uh, you know I just got engaged can I get an amen, amen. Um, come on and so and that takes us yeah. 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 Yes. and we're also praying for Mike Simmons yeah, yeah. I'm still single guys <laughs> so, <laughs> still single as a quick <laughs> 10 minutes ago <laughs> so I work probably 50 60 hours a week I just got engaged uh, I uh, have to make sure that I get in the gym every day and then you know probably another 20 30 40 hours a week in ministry praise God thank you <laughs> Pastor Devin so routines are uh, necessary in order to get all that done um, and to make sure that we get it done with excellence and mm -hmm. that I get it done with excellence so going back to kind of what I had mentioned earlier uh, in my weird routine um, you know last year I started to really um, kind of just push the gym aside uh, because I was, it, I wasn't fitting it into my schedule. I wasn't creating a, rut a routine to make sure that I got all of the things that I wanted to get do or get done done, um, and so I had to shift that to the morning. Um, and now that I actually have a proper routine um, and schedule, I'm able to get everything done that I want. I feel fulfilled at the end of the day. I'm able to sleep well. Yeah. I feel good. Um, and I actually, I feel less lethargic and tired now waking up two, three hours earlier just mm -hmm. because I have a routine, I have a structure, um, and I'm able to actually get everything done. So I'm not worried. I'm not stressed. I just, I, so, I have something, I have, I have rhythm, yeah. um, and I make sure that, you know, everything gets done. Um, I feel good about it. I get to spend time with my fiance, um, which I know makes her feel good. Um, and so it's just yeah. having a routine in your life 
just makes everything easier, falls into place, and you just it reduces stress. Totally. Let me let me ask you this real quick, Justin. Um, <laughs> so that when you wake up at two thirty four mm-hmm. in the morning, mm-hmm. um, and then you send me a text, and mm-hmm. I just love that about you. That's probably one of my favorite things. Rise and shine. So I want to get super practical for them. I think it'd be helpful. Mm-hmm. So what does from the moment you wake up at two thirty six for Justin for Dev he wakes up around noon. <laughs> <laughs> So when you wake yeah, up, my, my son has me up early in the morning. Right. Definitely not two thirty four a.m. But right. right. So what does it look like? What is your morning routine? Give me real practical. When do you wake up? What does it look like? What are the activities, etc.? You want me to take it? Go ahead. Um, well, first of all, I'll answer that. But then also, Mike, I would love to hear from you because as much as uh, as much as people probably think, wow, this guy's a literal idiot talking to <laughs> Mike. He actually has a lot of wisdom and he has a lot of. Uh, He's very disciplined himself, so I want you to talk on too. I'm just kidding. You don't sound like an idiot. You sound like an imbecile. Um, oh, anyways, okay. Uh, start the podcast. With, um, so my personal. You're asking what kind of what is my personal routine? Is that what? Yeah, you're I want to know time that you wake up, and then for the first thirty minutes, what do I do? What can I practically do to set a good routine? Because I think the morning sets the routine. For me personally, my morning routine is the same exact thing every day. Now, not all people do that. I do that personally, and I have some very intentional things, and I'll talk about that in a second. But let's do that so they have some practical tips. Um, Okay, so different days have different uh, routines to them for me. Uh, I normally do the same practical things every day, but the timing changes based on um, my calendar for the day. So I have, I saw this from Rich Wilson Jr., and I've kind of translated to my own personal uh, lifestyle. But Mondays are my days off, that's time with family, and then I have basketball at night, so that's kind of me time. Um, by the way, self-care is not selfish, it's healthy, and it's, it's proper mm-hmm. stewardship for your life, so you need to make yep. sure you have a routine and a rhythm and a calendar. Um, everybody, another practical tip, everybody needs to use a flipping calendar. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked yeah. with how people don't use a calendar anymore. Um, I meet a lot of people that, they're, I'm asking them, hey, let's meet next Thursday, you know, at 12.30, and they okay, and I, I don't see them write down their phone, I'm just like, how do you know you're gonna be there? Oh, it, it's just in my head. No, you, need, you gotta put things on your it's phone good. or mm-hmm. on an actual calendar. Use a calendar, first of all. Um, so, Monday's my off days. Tuesday, I call it Tackle Tuesday. That is projects, that's tasks. It's a bunch of things I need to get done for the week. The things that are up and coming, I get it done on Tuesday. Wednesday, we call it Work Wednesday, and that's normally all day meetings from beginning to night, uh, from, being, from morning to night. Thursday is my Think Thursday, so that's where I take time to strategically plan on the ministry, not just in the ministry. And so mm-hmm. I'll go to a coffee shop, I'll take time in my home, and I'll probably take about four to five hours where I'm studying for sermons, where I'm uh, reading books, where I am listening to podcasts, and that's really important time for me. Uh, I'll go to the gym at that's night. That's why I get about a million boxes on a Thursday. <laughs> Thursdays, <laughs> Thursdays are big, high-level kind of stuff. Friday is Flexible Friday. That's where I'm meeting with my mentors or people that I mentor and people that I lead. And it's definitely definitely flexible still because sometimes we have you know our flat weight nights on those nights. Sometimes we have team meetings. Sometimes it's just social and developing, investing in people. Saturday we call it semi slow Saturday, so it's like half a day. Like today, I'm working half a day. We're doing this podcast. We have a strategy meeting right after this. Yep. Sunday is slam Sunday, so it's all day long from morning till normally night. We have a meeting right after church, and oftentimes we have big socials on Sunday nights at my house mm-hmm. or, or a certain place. And so that's kind of my weekly rhythm. I know yep. I gave a lot in there, but it's kind of how it works. Yeah, that's good. And I'll share a little bit about my personal morning routine. And so my general rhythm is I wake up at 5.55. So if I'm exhausted and I'm human, and so maybe it's a busy ministry week or something like that, I will give myself the grace of about 30 minutes to kind of wake up. But on a general day, I'm waking up right at 5.55. The first thing that I do practically is I hydrate. And so I'm a firm believer, you know, we, we're a three-part being, mm-hmm. right? So we're, we're spirit, we're mind, body, spirit. And so we have, we have three parts of us. If one of those parts of myself are out of rhythm, then my entire being will not be great. And so what I do, and the, the first thing that I do is I'm very thankful in the morning. I'm very intentionally thankful. So the minute I wake up, I put a huge smile on my face. And I do do this like on a daily, on a daily basis. 
I put a huge smile on my face. Yeah, I sometimes think, he'll send me a selfie. With right. I'm smile. actually the least grateful when I see Justin. Um, <laughs> I actually have him as the doctor on my phone. So I'm the least grateful then. And I actually, um, I'm going to block him after this because <laughs> I'm just sick of, of this nonsense. Um, but right after that, I'll hydrate. I drink two large glasses of water, but I also add electrolytes in that. And so in terms of hydration, things of that nature. And then I have I have a bulletproof coffee. I don't know if you do. Do you do bulletproof or no? Nope. Yeah, so Justin doesn't do just uh, anything. Anyways, um, so I, I do a bulletproof coffee, and you can look up. I'm not going to explain that. But a couple practical things that I do throughout the day. Um, I recently found a guy named Laird. And he's like a surfer, but he has different cheap products that have superfoods in it. And so I'm very, I'm not health conscious, but I'm very health intentional. And so I, I'll, use, I'll in my coffee in the morning, I, he has a coffee creamer that has turmeric and different superfoods that are incredible for your health. And so what this will do is my mind is now sharp. And so right after I have my my superfood coffee, I'm doing some sort of breathing exercise. I won't get into that, but what that'll do is it'll wake up your body. Um, And so I I subscribe to a lot of what Tony Robbins does in terms of breathing and really getting this energy inside of you. And then I'm every single morning, practically for my devotionals, I'm doing an hour with God. Now, you don't have to start there. If you're going to start a habit or if you're going to start a routine, When I first started doing uh, prayer and things of that nature, it was a few minutes. It was two, three, four, five minutes. And at the end of that, I couldn't do it. Now I've been doing this for so long that after I drink my coffee, I'll go right into an hour with God. What does that look like? Um, I'll do some sort of devotional. Dev and I were having a great conversation the other day about what it looks like to do devotionals. And so he reads uh, chronologically through the Bible. And so he has good context and things of that nature. I'll touch on what you do. Okay. And so I'm going to shift my routine a little bit, but I'll very intentionally, just to keep it short, I'll do an hour of time with God. And then directly after that, I'm back into some sort of gratitude slash planning exercise. So I'll write down five things that I'm grateful for. I'll plan the day and I go off and I run with it. That's great. So I think you need uh, several rhythms <coughs> for different categories, you know, body, mind, spirit, body, mm-hmm. soul, spirit, however you want to yep. define the triune being of a, of a human being. But I think, so your body, I love what you're saying about, uh, you know, drinking two cups of water. Uh, since you told me that I've been doing that, it's been very helpful for me. Um, normally how I wake up, I'll wake up and I'll wake up earlier, about an hour before my family wakes up. I'll go off to my living room and I'll grab my devotional Bible and I'll grab, I just mentioned it to both of you guys, my Bible handbook. It's called Haley's Bible Handbook, just a study tool to read scripture. Because I'm not just trying to read scripture to read scripture. I'm trying to read scripture to understand scripture. I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong. It's not just to read the Bible, but the Bible says to study the Bible. Mm. And so there are certain days where I have a lot more time to study the Bible. Like my Thursday, I study the Bible. Mondays, I study the Bible. And then the other days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, I'll just read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully that helps and gives some practicality to it. Because you're not called to, you're not supposed to just simply read the Bible. You're supposed to understand it and study it. Yeah. So that's one That's one little thing. I also feed, um, you know, you got to feed your spirit, which is scripture. You also should feed your soul, which I think are books. So live in the Bible your whole life, but visit other books. That's good. And so I feed my spirit and my soul every single day. And something that has translated for me is I have uh, audiobooks, and so I'll listen. I've crushed, like I think it's like seven books so far this year in 2020. That's where I get all my lists and stuff like that from. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to double what I did last year. I, I read 20 books last year. I'll try and read about 40 books this year. And so it's just getting a lot of information in me, but I also am constantly writing down notes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So my audiobooks really help with that. And what the language I put to it is, you know, we go to Vehicle University. So if you're in your car, your commute is anywhere between, you know, 20 minutes to 40 minutes. Mine's about 20 minutes. Uh, it's probably about 30 minutes uh, there and 30 minutes back the rest of the day. That's an hour of time where you can go to school. And so that's what I basically take that time to go to vehicle university. It helps me. So I feed my spirit. I feed my soul, which is reading good books. It's, that's my mind, will, emotions. And then my body, you know, I'm trying to go to the gym. I go to the gym probably three to five times a week. Basketball Monday and Thursdays, gym uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, sometimes Fridays. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit my routine, but that's good. And Jess, I know you're competing <clears throat> for the strong man. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Justin's no. body transformation has been crazy yeah. this past year. Like last year, you were skeletal. <laughs> and then yeah, he so I, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I, I went on a fast and lost uh, about 100 pounds. <laughs> 
Jamie, how many pounds God. did you actually lose? It was I like lost 20, right? 20 pounds in 21 days, yeah. In 21 days. Like, yeah. literally, he, he turned from, you know, he looked like you know Bruce Banner, and then he turned into the Hulk later on. In the, in the <laughs> like, who is this scrawny pipsqueak? And then who, wh- I turned who, sideways. Who and he's ripped again. <laughs> um, Dev, while you were talking, I was uh, something popped into my head. So, say if I'm, I just recently started going to church, and I don't, I have no. So when I was 20 years old, I I got saved when I was 26 years ago. And I remember I was like, I have no idea where to start with the Bible. I don't know what, like, Pretty never much. mind a rhythm or a routine. I don't even know how, like, where do I? So for somebody who just got saved or maybe just started going to church, how can we start reading the Bible? Great what does question. that look like? Great question. Um, I think it could help a lot of people too. So <laughs> I wish I wish somebody asked, I wish I asked that question back in the day. I would start in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or I would start with wisdom literature, which basically is... You know, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Job, even James in the New Testament really helps quite a bit. Yeah. So I would go through those things. I would also invest, if you're serious about learning the Bible, I would invest in some study tools. It would really help you. Again, I mentioned Haley's Bible Handbook. That's spelled like Halley's. It's how it's spelled. Halley's Bible Handbook. That really helps. Or get a Bible dictionary. I have a uh, thing called Unger's Bible Dictionary. U-N-G-O-R-S. Unger's Bible Dictionary. Really helps quite a bit. And then I would also, everybody needs a Bible, they need Bible study tools, and they need a preacher. And you need a Bible teacher, not just somebody that, uh, you know, is entertaining. You need somebody that can teach you scripture. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I love about our church and our pastor, at Connect Church, Pastor Derek Fry, he's a Bible teacher. So I've learned the scriptures just being in his household. And so you need a Bible, you need Bible study tools, and you need a Bible teacher. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that Haley's... uh Reference guide, that the thing I, I just I just ordered it. Awesome. Things, yeah, I can't wait to dig in because I know so helpful. Dev showed me over at, at our leaders advance in January, and that thing um, is going to be a game changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was I was just reminded. Uh, this is a good reference for you guys, especially when it comes to habits and a biblical science based. Um, a practical approach to building a habit and so I just wanted to kind of um, say a few things I remember when I was doing research and so a lot of people think that you know in order to build a habit you need 21 days which is true but that builds in your mind this she characterizes it as almost as if it's a tree and so there's a small little tree that you create in your mind and so and then after 63 days she says that's when the habit is created and so that's why it's so important because as Romans chapter 12 says, it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that practically look like? So all the, even the habits that, you know, Justin, Dev and I have been talking about, it's not a one, two, three, four, or five day thing. The Bible is not, you read it and it's, your life is transformed. After six years, I feel like I'm starting to get to like this very elementary um, biblical foundation where I'm starting to understand it. And so what we need to know is that in order for us to have good, healthy, effective routines to transform our lives and others, it needs to be over the long term. It's good. Yeah. Consistent so. decisions, absolutely. Daily decisions is so important. What's John Maxwell quote? Success doesn't happen in a day. It happens in the daily. Yep. And so it's the consistent patterns and behaviors that we have. That's what changes our lives over time. Yeah, amen. And Dev, why, why don't we transition? Uh, we have a few more minutes. We can end with this thought. Um, but I know you were talking about the five daily habits. Your dad has a very good, um, basically, frame of mind when he looks at what am I supposed to do daily as a man or woman of God? If you can touch on that, that'd be great. It's great. I was trying to find a list. I don't have the whole thing in front of me, so I won't remember all of them. But I know take care of those who I love most, um, invest in somebody, invest in yourself. Uh, spend time in prayer in the Word, and I can't remember the fifth one. It will come back to me in some time, but those would be four I would do every single day um, to really make a difference in somebody's life, uh, make a difference in your own life, take care of yourself. Again, like I said, I think it was in the previous podcast or this one, um, self-care is not selfish. It is proper stewardship, and you are a steward of your life. Mm-hmm. And so something I would love to talk about in a future podcast is even killing that victimization mindset because that is one thing that will sabotage you so fast. Your life is your responsibility. Mm, God can help you. God will assist you. But ultimately, and I've said this a lot, and you guys can probably finish my sentence now, 
God wants you a healthy Christian. Really what we're talking about this whole podcast is the value of healthy, being a healthy leader. Mm -hmm. And so really what God wants you to be, this is my definition for a healthy leader, is somebody that is spirit-led and Mm -hmm. principle-driven. The whole... um, you know, the whole New Testament church was built on Acts 6-3. They, the qualifications for people that they were looking for for building the church was they had to be spirit-filled and they had to be wise. Spirit-led, principle-driven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's why you have to have routines. And it's not just, you know, your belief system. Because you can be a good person and not live a good life. Yeah. I hope everybody heard me. I'll say it one more time. You can be a good person and not live a good life. And so you need to have wisdom. But you also need to be spirit-filled. And so I think that's why the Holy Spirit really helps us and assist us in our day to day. That's why you gotta pray. That's why you gotta get in the word, get to know God. Because He will help you and He will open doors that no other person could. And He will shut doors that no other person could. And some things, you know, we need to praise God for the doors that He shut, not just the doors yeah. that He's open. Yeah. But you need to be spirit filled and you need to be principle driven. That's why having behaviors, habits, and routines are so valuable, mm-hmm. so important. I love I love even the scripture that you had talked about for this podcast. It was in Hosea chapter four, verse six. It says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're talking about today is there's, there are rhythms and routines and there's rest that you need to get in order for this, this transformation from my old person who I used to be to who I am now. There's this, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but anyways, I hope you guys loved this podcast this week. Uh, Do me a favor too, uh, especially if this is maybe, uh, you know, a few times that you've listened. If you can, please share this podcast with somebody that you might think, you know, could really get a lot out of this. I think this one was very practical. I think it was helpful for people. And so if you're uh, watching on YouTube, you can subscribe, you can click the the bell, you give it like the ding, you know what I mean? The the, the ding, like give me a ding so you guys can consume this. (laughs) Hey, but uh, we love you guys so much. Thank you for coming out this week. And I'm just so grateful for, you know, Pastor Devin and Justin. Hey, for our YouTube family and our podcast listeners as well, listen, uh, we would love if you would send in some questions. We would love to get yes. some questions mm-hmm. from you so that we can practically answer some of the problems that you're facing. And uh, we collectively can kind of add our wisdom together and really help you and help all those that are maybe struggling inside of your family, your relationships, or your sphere yeah. of influence. We want to help you. Listen, because we don't fear the future. We pioneer it. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our YouTube content. We are so excited to have you and so honored that you would listen to it. Listen, if you could do a few things for me. One is, the Bible says very clearly in Hosea, it talks about, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And what we want to do is we want to give you biblical help, we want to give you practical solutions, and we want to provide some cultural responses to some stuff. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. So if you could do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to it, send it to some friends. We want to help you and get the message out. We love you. God bless.